Well, thank you very much, and thank you so much for having me and the British delegation here today. It's a great pleasure to be here in a place of a uh, place where foreign policy has been considered uh, over some decades in a place of great learning and knowledge and with a lot of people who have a lot of learning and knowledge uh, about the situation in the Middle East uh, over recent decades and today. And it's a great pleasure to take part in a discussion with you uh, on this single most important event in foreign policy so far in the 21st century. And I say so far, we never know what is going to happen uh, in the next month or the next year. Uh, there was a paper in the British Foreign Office, which I saw in 2010, shortly after I became Foreign Secretary, which said that something big is going to happen in the Arab world, that when you look at the demographics, when you look at the economics, when you look at the uh, lack of progress in certain areas, something is going to give. But it had no uh, sense in 2010 of when this would happen. And suddenly, in January last year, we found ourselves dealing, uh, almost a year ago today, uh, dealing with remarkable events in Tunisia, uh, and then uh, the, uh, the Arab Spring rolling on through 2011. And I think I perhaps have a slightly different perspective on it from the chairman, because I would like to argue that it's a bit more spring than Arab. Uh, whereas you were suggesting it was more Arab than spring. Uh, and I will uh, elaborate just over the next five or ten minutes on what I mean uh, about this. Um, but I also want to welcome the fact that between the United Kingdom and Brazil, uh, we can have such dialogue in so many different ways about foreign policy. I had some excellent uh, hours yesterday with your foreign minister. Uh, and we discussed in our strategic dialogue the whole range of issues going on in the world, including, of course, the events in the Arab world. Uh, but I see scope in the coming years for a much more intensive exchange of views and understanding between the UK uh, and Brazil. You are expanding your diplomatic presence in the world. And actually, you may not uh, know this, but we are expanding our diplomatic uh, presence at the moment, including and particularly in Latin America with a new consulate here in the north of Brazil, with a new uh, embassy in El Salvador. Uh, Britain is expanding again uh, in Latin America and in Africa uh, and many parts uh, of the world. Um, the Arab Spring was... Uh, as I was saying, undoubtedly the defining foreign policy event of last year, and of course it is still going on, and it will go on in some ways for decades uh, in its impact on the uh, societies concerned. Uh, I think we should be clear that greater freedom and democracy in the Middle East is an idea whose time has come, and it holds the greatest prospect for the enlargement of human freedom and dignity of any event since the end of the Cold War. Uh, in world uh, events. It is therefore something we should be optimistic about, but on the whole we should welcome, even though it throws up uh, many crises and difficulties along the way. And I have found in my visits to, uh, particularly to North African countries, that there is a truly inspiring aspect to it. Uh, I was the first uh, European foreign minister, perhaps the first of any foreign minister, to visit Tunisia uh, after the revolution in early February uh, last year, the curfew was still in force. Uh, the new government there was only days old. But I sat down with some of the young people who had taken part peacefully in their revolution. And their determination to be free, to express their own opinions, to have dignity for themselves and their country, to enjoy some of the things that Europeans enjoyed only a short distance across the Mediterranean Sea, was absolutely resolute and quite inspiring. And we should remember that that is, the, that is what is fueling the Arab Spring. It is a human desire to have these things that are, in my view, the, the right of all human beings. And I've seen that in Libya as well on many visits to Libya last year. Uh, where the moment I was convinced that um, Colonel Gaddafi would be overthrown uh, was not the seeing and overseeing some of the details each day of NATO uh, operations. It was going to Benghazi at the beginning of June uh, at the height of the conflict in Libya and seeing the utter determination, again, of people to be free uh, and their revulsion at 40 years of dictatorship, their anger at what had been done to them and their families. And when you could see that 
that immense desire for freedom among people in Benghazi, uh, then you really were persuaded that these people would win, uh, that they were not going to bow down again uh, to a dictatorial regime. And so I think in societies like the United Kingdom and Brazil that believe in human rights, in democracy, in accountable government, uh, we should regard this as an inspiring and positive uh, event, even though we have to try to manage uh, some of the crises and conflicts that, uh, uh, that are thrown up as a result. Um, this is a, a reflection of our, our values. It's, of course, uh, important. It, it's important to our national interests as well to support positive change in this very important uh, region of the world. And these events matter to Brazil, as of course, as well as to the UK. You share the same values, as I say. You also have roughly 12 million Brazilians, I think, claiming Middle Eastern descent. Uh, and so you have important people-to-people -people links with the Arab world. And as one of the BRICS countries, and until recently a member of the UN Security Council, and by the way, we hope you will in the future be a permanent member of the Security Council, but until recently in that uh, position, Brazil has power and influence in promoting global uh, security. So in, in my view, the change underway in Egypt and Tunisia and Libya uh, as well as in different ways in Morocco and Jordan, uh, where uh, reforms are taking place peacefully. We don't know how successfully yet. Uh, the, these, um, this, this change shows that demands for political and economic freedom will spread more widely in the world and will spread of their own accord, partly fueled by dissatisfaction with the um, economic and political position in their countries, but also by the spread of information in the information age. Social networking sites and so on have played an important role uh, in these revolutions. And the full effect of this is yet to be felt, uh, both in the Arab world and in other parts of the world. I think the demand for more accountable government will continue to spread to other nations beyond the Arab world. And that is why, that's one of the reasons I say it is a spring and not just an Arab uh, event. And this will happen not because Western nations advocate these things, uh, but because the desire for dignity, freedom, and opportunity uh, are inherent in human beings everywhere, in every society, and it, they will make themselves, these desires will make themselves felt in every uh, society. Having said that, these are, um, these are Arab revolutions, uh, not ours. Change has been led by the people of these countries. It's not for us to dictate the pace or nature of that change. We want them to be democratic and open societies. But if we believe in that, we have to accustom ourselves to the idea that they will not always do what we want them to do or elect the people that we might prefer. But that is normal. Even in Europe, we don't always have uh, elections that produce governments of the people we prefer, uh, but we have a good ways of working with them, whatever the result. And so we should not take fright that there are parties taking part in uh, democratic elections that we don't always agree with. Uh, we should not be terrified that there are parties uh, winning elections that have strong Islamic uh, roots. After all, for centuries, there have been parties winning elections in Europe that have strong Christian roots. Uh, that, there's nothing wrong with that in itself, provided that elections continue to take place and that a choice continues to be made by the people of those countries uh, over the years uh, ahead. I think what this means for our role as uh, responsible and leading nations in the world is, um, first of all, we should not be silent about repression. We may differ sometimes about how we handle this, but we cannot be silent about repression, violence, attempts to suppress uh, human rights. Uh, this throws up very difficult questions, for instance, about how we respond to events in Syria uh, now, where a brutal regime has murdered thousands uh, of its own people. Um, and, of course, there is an international demand to do something to support the people of Syria. We are doing so with uh, sanctions in the European Union. We have tried to pass a UN Security Council a resolution showing the opinion of the world. Uh, that was uh, vetoed in October. In my view, it was a great mistake to, uh, by Russia and China to uh, veto that resolution. We will try again at the UN Security Council. And the Arab League are playing a welcome and leading role. Uh, we understand and see very well that um, exactly what the chairman was just saying, that 
These societies are heterogeneous. Um, you cannot have a one-size-fits-all way of uh, assisting. Uh, the situation in Syria has similarities to Libya, but it also has important differences, and the consequences of an intervention in Syria would be far harder to foresee than was the case in Libya, and we are not advocating or calling for military intervention in, in uh, Syria. So we mustn't be silent about repression. We have to work out how to help uh, in each case. And we have to work with the region, secondly, to help create the building blocks of democratic uh, reform. And that is what we're trying to do in the United Kingdom and in the European Union. Uh, we favor an ambitious European neighborhood policy that makes a real new offer of friendship and closer association to the countries of North Africa with the European Union, uh, economically and in every way. And we've launched our Arab Partnership uh, Fund, a £110 million fund from the United Kingdom over the next four years, uh, which supports political and economic uh, reform and brings expertise in how to carry out such uh, reform. And I think our civil society can help in both our countries in generating debate about these issues, as we are doing uh, here uh, today. Um, and it underlines... Um, trying to bring my remarks to a close because I've already been speaking for 10 minutes, it underlines the urgency of the Middle East peace process uh, as well. Um, it is tempting for, in some quarters, to think that while this is going on, the Middle East peace process cannot make much progress. Actually, this underlines the urgency of the peace uh, process. It makes it more urgent for Israelis uh, and uh, Palestinians, uh, and that is a very strong view uh, of the United Kingdom. So each Arab society is different, and yet something in common is happening across all of these societies. Saudi Arabian women are being given the vote in local elections. Uh, in Yemen, we are at last seeing perhaps a process of uh, agreed uh, change and reform. I've mentioned many of the other countries in North Africa. They're all different, but they have important similarities. It is a single event that is happening. And in my view, it will affect many other societies in the world uh, over the next 10 or 20 or 30 years. And so while we have difficult foreign policy decisions to make about how to assist, whether or not to intervene in certain cases, and I'd be happy in our questions to discuss what we did on Libya and what our approach should be in uh, Syria. Nevertheless, we should overall welcome this positive event in human history uh, this yearning for freedom, uh, which tells us that the Arabs are not exceptional in that they can be downtrodden and dictated to, but they are people like us who want to be able to make decisions uh, for themselves. And that, I think, that is the bottom line and is a, an immensely reassuring as well as inspiring event in world affairs. Thank you very much indeed.